Hello, welcome to this video. I'm previously tutor. Before we go anywhere, do not forget to ring the bell and subscribe to my YouTube channel. For those of my students, make sure you watch the video. I'll be slow as possible. In today's lesson on chemistry, we'll be looking at the periodic table. A periodic table. Now, what is a periodic table? A periodic table is a table of elements. So it's a table of elements in increasing order order of atomic number. All the elements that are found on the periodic table they have atomic number. The structure of a periodic table is something like this. I'm sure most of you have seen it before. Something like that. If I'm not mistaken. So we have group one. It has got groups. Then this is group two. Then this is group three. Then group four. Sorry, group four, group five, group six, then group seven and group eight. So there are eight groups. Then we have periods. We have periods which are like this. These are rows now. So we have row one, row two. This is period one, period two, period three, just like that going down. So going down like this, in terms of rows, you have periods. Vertical words, you have mm, uh, columns. So that's what you must know about the predictable. In case you don't know what we're talking about, let me show you a picture of a predictable. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen this table below. Then we... This is what we call a predictable. It has got group one, then group two. These are in, in Roman numerals, you can see them. Like that. Then we have periods. Have the first period is where hydrogen is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight periods. Sorry, nine actually. We have nine periods. So this is what a predictable is, and this we are going to look at certain elements who we'll talk about the properties of these groups and certain periods. So let's go. Now we know that a predictable is made of groups. Let's look at group one. Group one elements they are known as alkali metals these include for example sodium lithium calcium potassium these are found in group one one of the characteristics that they have low density For example, lithium can float on water. They are reactive. For example, calcium. Their reactivity increases as you go down the group. As you go down the group. What happens when a group 1 element reacts with oxygen? For example, sodium reacting with oxygen. It's going to, so, to form an oxide. Sodium oxide. So, all group 1 elements, they have one valence electron. What do I mean? In their outer shell, they only have one electron which they lose during bonding
then what else do we have to know about group one uh, elements they can easily be cut is it be cut so you can easily cut them for example it's the, the same lithium sodium you can you can easily cut them even with a with a knife group 2 elements we are known as alkali earth metals They are all solids at room temperature and pressure. Their properties are not that different from uh, group 1 elements. Apart from they have a valence of 2, positive 2 in their outer most shell. What I mean is that in their outer shell they have 2 electrons, which they have to lose during bonding. Then, I'll just look at the most important elements. We have group four, group, group three, group four, group five, group six. Let's go to group seven. Group seven elements, what do we call them? These are known as halogens. These are nanometers. They are not metals. So instead, they gain electrons. They can form halides. Right? Their reactivity increases as you go up the group. What do we mean? When you look at group 7 elements, we have, on top we have fluorine, followed by chlorine, followed by bromine, followed by iodine, followed by acetatine. So as you go up from bottom, the activity increases. And as you go down, it decreases. And you have group 8. Group 8, or you can say group O. These elements are known as noble gases. Others call them inert gases. Or group O elements. Examples of group O elements is neon, then we have helium, we have argon, and radon, as well as xenon. These are some of the group O elements. These are unreactive. Though they have been believed to react, but for now, just take it as they are unreactive. They don't form compounds. Okay. They have eight electrons in the outer shell. In the outer shell. That's about group eight elements. Now what happens when a group 1 element reacts with a group 3 element? Let me say 3. Group 3 we have nanometers. Group 1 we have metals. Let's give an example of sodium. Sodium is found in group 1 with a valence of positive 1. Let, uh, let me say boron. Boron is found in period D, 3. Boron is found in, in period D, in group 3, B. It's found in group 3 because it has 3 electrons in the outer shell. So it has something like this. So it needs 3 electrons in short.
Now, how do we form a compound between this metal and this nonmetal? So you cross multiply. So this positive goes there and this negative comes there. So the compound formed, it will be this. What if between sodium and a group six, a group seven element such as, sorry, a group five, such as nitrogen, know that sodium has a valence of one and nitrogen is found in group five. So it has five electrons in the outermost shell. So how many does it need in order to... So here it's found in group three because it has three electrons in the outer shell. So how many does it need? It needs... For to, to be eight, it needs five. So here's supposed to be five. This needs how many? It's found in group five. So it needs only three electrons to be eight. So we have... There comes down. This one comes there. So we have sodium, like that, the nitrogen, the reacting nitrogen. So these are some of the reactions that we can expect as we introduce periodic table. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video on previous day Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe.